my colleagues, stakeholders, I am Bella Megeri, the Acting Executive Secretary of the National Lottery Trust Fund. Honourable members, my colleagues, I am Kapulama Ishaku, just made Head of Finance and Accounts, National Lottery Trust Fund. Sir, honourable members, my name is Wamo Dai, Head of Administration, National Lottery Trust Fund. Already established protocol, my name is Matthew James Pukuma, uh, Head of Remittance, National Lottery Trust Fund. Others, my name is uh, Barista Christy Okafor. I am the legal advisor of the National Lottery Trust Fund. Thank you. Distinguished uh, Honorable Chairman, uh, Honorable Members, my colleagues, my name is Benedict and I'm from ICBC. Honorable Chairman, Honorable Members, I am Wellington Kamad, ICBC. Honorable Members, my name is Abia Utofia, I'm a Director of Chairman's Office, ICBC. Honorable Chairman, Honorable Members of House of Breath, my name is Alapo de Latuji, I'm from the Federal Library Service. House of Breath and my colleagues, my name is Taragi Jerome, I'm from Federal Inland Revenue Service. Honorable Chairman, Honorable Member of the House of Breath, my name is Ojani De Olale, Head Banking Services, Central Bank of Nigeria. Honorable members of the committee, I am Anas Galadima, Government Relations Manager, MTN Nigeria. Good Chairman, Honorable Committee, my name is Tobe Okibo. I am Corporate Executive for MTN Nigeria. I'm here representing my CEO, Mr. Ferdi Mulman. Ms. Adere Mitrojai, I'm Senior Manager, Commercial Legal for MTN. It's Kendi Sanusi, I'm a GM with Airtel Network. Honorable Chairman, members of the committee, uh, my name is Shola Diemi, Director of Legal Regulatory, Company Secretary, Airtel. Honorable Chairman, honorable members, my name is Simon Adirin Lola, GM Commercial, Airtel. Honorable members of this committee, my name is Chinedu Chukuji, CEO, Copyright Society of Nigeria, on behalf of the creative industry. Ladies, uh, my name is Asha Fakbo. I'm representing uh, Piman. I'm here with Piman in the trade okay. uh, The president, national president, Akosi of Nigeria. Uh, today is a day in history, and I pray history guides us surely. Because at the end of today, this committee has requested for document long, long time ago. But unfortunately, I'm just, I got some document now and letters explaining why they can't present document and some no letters at all. See, it is simple. We can't continue with this cat and mouse thing. We need to draw the line. I have things to do. Most of you have things to do. This investigation is not about me. I keep emphasizing on this. It is not about me. And it can never be about me. We are here for one simple reason. We have a country, then we have our laws. If we have strong laws, we have strong economy. And that is what we are here to do. So please, don't try to make this about Ahmed Abu. It's not about me. Someone brought this motion on the floor of the house, and a resolution was passed, a mandate, for us to carry out this investigation. And that is why we're here. 
unfortunately, this has dragged long, this has dragged for too long. And I condole it for one simple reason, fairness. So that if I'm making my pronouncement, no one will accuse me for making such pronouncement. And it's very, very simple. I think some of the, some of the industry have, have decided to use a very simple tactics. Okay, let's drag this on. It's another committee. His lifespan is going to expire. You got it all wrong, honestly. Because this investigation has taken a life of its own. And if you want to check that out, it's simple. Go on social media, then you understand what is happening. And this is a notification for CBN to take note, for FIRS to take note, because we are talk talking about leakages here. And most importantly, <laughs> even if I collapse on this chair today, that is why I've invited ICPC and EFCC. <laughs> All it takes is a letter paper, my letter paper, saying this is where I stop on this investigation. And trust me, I've already done that sign. They take it over because this cannot continue. And it is so shameful and it's painful that some of these CEOs we're talking about are carrying Nigerian face. How can you do that to your country? That is why I'm pain. How can you do that to your country? You can't try that in South Africa. Neither can you try it in India. Or can you, can you try it in the US or, 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 or United Kingdom? I went to school there and I know exactly what I'm talking about. What pain means that most of these CEOs are carrying Nigerian face? Why? You see, all these delay tactics is not taking us anywhere. This is my opening remark. I'm going to listen to those that are here and I'll come to a conclusion. I received a letter here. I won't call the name of the company, but I'm going to make an issue out of it. We wrote a letter, what, what date is this one, kind, 21st of November, asking for the contract between the telcos and the bus providers. 21st November. Today is what? 14th. Our first letter went out. The first excuse was that the DHL got there a day before the hearing. Fair enough. Let's postpone. The second one, we wrote another letter. The next excuse was simple. I, I have taken side with the creative industry. This is going to be an ambush. Let's postpone. Then we have the third letter. But unfortunately, uh, the, 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 the strategy this time around is it's, it's shocking and embarrassing. One of the letters I'm reading, I have before me, uh, said uh, the standing committee has requested for those documents and they submitted some of these documents to the standing <coughs> committee. Now, let me lecture you on that. Where you have an adult committee, a simple assignment. We all use the computer, our phones, you can do that, Google it. Where you have an adult committee, it means is investigative in nature. Investigation, simple, simple English, right? The activities of the standing committee in respect of this issue ceases until the House at plenary dissolve this committee. Well, the last time I went to the floor, that has not happened yet. Now, all this is simple. And why I'm bitter, I will tell you, and I want Nigerians to listen. 
The difference between democracy and dictatorship is just one simple thing. This institution called parliament. Because even in dictatorship, you have the head, you have the ministers, and you have the governors, and you have the advisors. What you don't have is parliament. And if you look at other economy, you will realize something. They have a strong Congress. Do you know why I won't allow this to go? Look, I don't even care about the next election, whether I'm here or not. I don't. Seriously, I don't. Even my attitude show it, shows it. What I'm concerned about is this institution, because if we ridicule this institution, then we are in trouble. Then what is the fate of every Nigerian out there? Then you guys are doing it. That is why I'm bitter. What you're doing is coalition between one committee to the other, between one colleague to the other. I am not petty. I'm better than that. And all you have to do is just to Google my name on the internet. Then you will now know all I'm, all I'm about. I am not petty. For, for, for the act of trying to collide one member with the other, or one committee chairman with the other is disgraceful. You see this document, we have it. It's simply because of fair play, that's why we ask you guys to submit it. And let me tell you, whether you run to the IS court on this land, let me dramatize this. What are you doing? A standing committee, other committee, this committee is like the Supreme Court, right? You run to the high court for help. And the case is already at the Supreme Court. What are you doing? Can someone please help me out here? So, So the delay tactics hasn't worked so far. It hasn't. Because you only made my, 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 my job easier. Because it's obvious, the press are listening, that I gave you a fair ground to respond. And you didn't. And let me tell you what you did again. This issue has two elements to it. Is it a legal question or is a political question? Then you have an act that says 7030. That's what the act says. So I don't know how you how you probably go to the court and say, oh, the act says 7030, but we do have an agreement with Mr. A and Mr. B. He who must go to equity must come with clean hands. You see, what you have, that agreement, what you call an agreement, is nothing but a tissue paper. It's <coughs> void and void. And you can go to any court you want. That is what I said. That is the legal aspect of it, the legal question. And I want you to write this, and I want you to run this with your lawyers. Now, the political question about it is whether we have the right to investigate is our baby. Of course we do. What you are doing is not just justiciable. Never. Google that and see. You're just wasting your time. Whether you plot my remover, this investigation has taken a life of its own. EFCC, ICPC, please take note. And I'll tell you why. Let me start with the creative industry. You see, I like Lagos for a reason. For the love of this country, please, let's reason 
logically on this, for the love of this country. Look at California. Hollywood alone is worth $400 billion. I love Lagos for one reason. Lagos set the pace. Now, these young men, they've created something and it's booming. And that is why this is now, I'm going to give them the platform to hear them out. It's booming. What billions of dollars. Now, that is an industry itself. You see, unfortunately, I've listened to all arguments saying that the industry they, has invested a lot. They put in so millions of dollars. Well, the question I'm asking is this. Where is the place of pioneer status? When you came to this country, uh, was the NIPC, they are not here. When you came to this country to invest, you got a pioneer status. That gives you a leverage over what you invested, right? So, which means you've made money. So why suppress an industry that is trying to grow? And the act states, this is what you should do. But you go behind closed doors to have an agreement. Now, let's say I'm talking as a businessman right now. Let's leave that aside. I will allow them to speak. So you listen, then you make your own judgment. Then we have the trust, lottery commission, we have the trust fund. You see, this money is not just going to, 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 to the trust fund because they want to feed fat on it, no. This money is like a trust, charity trust fund for God's sake, who steal from charity? This money are meant to build schools, hospitals, then why take that? I don't get it. You will listen to their presentation. Then the Lottery Commission itself. And FIRS, to, to, where, 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 where are the people from uh, FIRS, please? You slept on the wheels, to be honest. You slept on the wheel. Because while you are going after people that own houses, people that own small shops, you actually slept on the wheels because this one is the big one. That is the big fish. If you want revenue, go towards this creative industry. You miss it, and it's so embarrassing. Well, I, I wouldn't go on your chairman because he was here last week, so he's excused. But I want you to take this message to him. You slept on the wheels. I don't want to go on and on and on. Honorable Darlington. He's talking about the institution where he belongs. And uh, I think it, the moment we start respecting institutions, the better for us at all levels. And sincerely, I may not, to a very great extent, blame people that seem to be ignorant. But I think the barest minimum for any qualification, in a particular capacity, where most of you occupy is graduate university. And what makes you say that qualification, the entry uh, into such positions, uh, universities that you, sh you should be very universal in terms of reasoning and in terms of putting things the way it ought to be. When you talk about ad hoc committee, let me put it straight. It is just um, a special committee, statutorily constituted by the House, for a particular assignment. When I say particular assignment, by the wisdom of the house, say, I want this thing to be, to, to be seamlessly identified. Please let this out to committee handle it. And 
our system here is very procedural. There is no person for any reason that we can shed any part of our mandate or responsibility for whatever reason. Because as I'm talking, I'm not talking as Dalent in culture. I'm talking as somebody that is representing Nigeria. So if any person is trying to impute any meaning out of the fact that you, 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 you must have uh, presented one document to the uh, standing committee, it's against the directive of an ad hoc committee, we have the right to request for any document of any manner. There's no classified information as far as the legislature is concerned. Whether it is councillor in your local government or the, state, uh, the uh, House of Assembly or the national level, no classified information. We declassify everything, whether it belongs to Buhari, whether it belongs to the president, whether it belongs to the vice or anybody. When we request for any document, you give it to us raw. That is the way it is. Because it's only we all over the world. It's only the legislature that can make a woman to become a man and make a man to become a woman. That is the simple definition. So somebody trying to paint an issue that, uh, let's just see it, maybe there is a standing committee, we have given it to If we request for any document, please, Mr. Chairman, I will, I will say that let's continue this meeting. But to the end of this meeting, towards the end of this meeting, and all the people you request to come without any conjured reason that they are not here to the end of the meeting, Chairman, I will move a motion that we will definitely uh, raise, um, 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 what's it called? Warrant, our, warrant, warrant of arrest at the end of the meeting. I will, will definitely do that. So let's give them some hours. If you have any of your bosses out there, please call them to come right now. Because we are not here wasting time. Most of us are on holidays. Some of us out there in other ministries and what are planning how they are going to travel. But I'm here seated. He's here seated. I'm not wasting our time. We have families. And we're not here joking. And I'm not sure that I've seen any of you out there asking you for one money, one naira, or whatever. We are doing the assignment mandatory. Say mandate. So please, Mr. Chairman, I will plead that we continue. But call your bosses out there. Because if not, towards the end of this meeting, I will crave and plead with the chairman. There must be warrants of arrest. And let's see how you will not come at the end of the day. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to see uh, where the constitution is. the constitution Constitution. Okay. So you see, in the Constitution, please, I want you to pay attention. You have powers that are expressed in the Constitution. Those powers are the ones which you pick up and just read. And we have powers that are implied in the Constitution. Probably you might read it and you won't get it. So, I'll play out a drama. And I'll use a government minister. A government minister, because we tend to make mess things up in this country, is higher than a billionaire sitting somewhere. And I'll tell you why. A billionaire, you come to this, you may be probably you are from this country, you apply for a license, the government gives it to you. You want to operate a business in Nigeria. Do you know what that means? That means we have good laws. Even if they are weak, we have good laws that protect lives and property. Mm -hmm. We have an enabling enabling environment to allow you to conduct your business. So if you're a billionaire, as far as the law is concerned, you are just like any other citizen in Nigeria. That is how it is about it. But over here, someone, someone probably in the 80s, and you know what? The time you are born matters a lot. Because probably at that time, mm -hmm. at that time in your lifespan, you are opportune, privileged to be at a certain place and you are at that age to acquire certain things. It doesn't mean you're special. So when you have those things, you feel you're bigger than the country and bigger than the laws of this country. In a nutshell, what it means is this. If a government minister is traveling with a Mr. President and he gets a phone call, this is how it is done abroad, where they have strong Congress. He gets a phone call saying, the Congress, the Parliament wants you to appear. 
you tell a Mr. President that I have just been summoned by the Parliament, a good president, and I'm so glad we have one, President Buhari will tell you, go and answer the Congress. That is why he came to present his budget here. And trust me, to make this institution stronger, we'll make an example out of some of these you'll see. I guarantee you that. Trust fund, please, you may have your presentation. Okay. Comply and provide those documents. We have many ways of getting documents, but we requested these documents to come from you. We can also direct the regulatory agencies to get us those documents from you, and you must provide them. But we requested you to provide these documents. So any documents requested by any committee of the House, whether ad hoc or standing committee, you must provide those documents. And the purpose of interacting is for you, in case there are allegations or something, for you to defend yourself. You are given an opportunity to present your own side of what, 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 whatever is requested for, so that you can defend yourself and get fair hearing. But if you refuse or fail to avail yourself with that opportunity, we can still go ahead. We have options. We can compel you to attend. Or we can go ahead and write our report and submit to the parliament and action will be taken. When that report is adopted, action will be taken against you. So we should be very, very careful because you are given opportunity to present your own side. You should not miss that opportunity by failing to attend. So let's take it very, very seriously. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Constitution of this ad hoc committee is in national interest. We, the National Lottery Trust Fund, have been having a lot of problems and constraints from the telecom industry. Since the inception of the, this trust fund in 2005, precisely in May 2005, um, and given the law establishing the agency, uh, we're expected to receive statutory remittances from lottery operators. These operators are categorized under two divisions. We have the core licenses on one hand, and we have the promotional lottery operators on the other hand. The subject matter of today, of your investigation today, sir, concerns the promotional lottery operators, who are the telecom operators and equipment vendors in that industry. Uh, we are expected by law to receive 20% of all the proceeds that they generate. And of course, in that manner, uh, we channel that resources for the promotion of lottery good courses for the benefit of all Nigerians. If we don't continue to receive these proceeds as accurate and timely and in due manner that is defined by law, the sustenance of this trust fund will not continue. And of course, most Nigerians will continue to languish in poverty, in ill health. Of course, we will continue to lack good education. Um, for the information of this committee, sir, uh, I will take you to my presentation in, uh, on page two, where the current practice does not suggest that this industry uh, hold Nigeria in high esteem. We have a law guiding the operation of every industry. These operators, well, of course, they are defined as uh, value-added service providers. They are expected to channel and remit statutory lottery proceeds from time to time to the trust fund through the regulatory commission, our sister agency, the National Lottery Regulatory Commission. And um, if I should tell you, sir, since the inception of this commission and the trust fund, we were only able to receive 530 million naira only. 530 million naira only. The details are there in my submission. If you look at item 1 to 21, all the operators are there, Airtel, MTN, 
Visa Phone, all these companies, year by year, that is where they remitted to the trust fund. And we have the record of all these statutory remittances. Where I'm going, sir, is this. They have not been fair to Nigerians. They have not done justice to the laws establishing this land, this uh, trust fund and the commission. They have been carrying out their businesses with impunity. Anytime we send in our demand notices for them to show cause why they have failed to remit 20% required by law to the trust fund. All they do is to go ignore us or threaten us with court, uh, with processes of court that uh, they have forwarded all these uh, demand notices to their own lawyers. They are studying it or they are engaging with the regulatory commission. Sooner or later, we will receive our due remittances. But over time, we have not been getting that. And that is why the fund, the total receipts that we have received so far is still that abysmal. This is an industry that generates billions of dollars. We know it. And of course, in, in the way they do business, because they are secretive, they are not transparent, they are not willing to disclose what they are making, that is why most of these things have not seen light of day. So I would like to enjoin and urge this honorable and distinguished committee to please and please make sure that the trust fund gets its own due right. And that is my brief submission, sir. Thank you very much, indeed. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, from you, for each of these telecom operators, you should have given us the amount due to you, then the amount paid by each of them, then the amount outstanding on each account. Because we have the security agencies and we are also here. Each of us can assist you in recovering these funds. But from what we have here, we don't even know what is due to you. So we want to have that. For each of them, if you take Airtel, for example, in 2009, how much was due? They have not paid anything, so they are still owing that. If you go to the next 2010, how much was due, out of which they paid 23 million? Or is the 23 million for 2009 and 2010? So we want to have it properly documented how much is due from each of them, and how much have they paid, and how much is outstanding. Thank you. Uh, you have of the fact that these operators are not ready to cooperate with us. We know for a fact if they are running a promotional lottery, say, uh, if you do this, you win this. What that essentially means is that there are systems in their own network that will enable you to know the total sums of money raised for that particular lottery, isn't it? If you write for them to disclose such data to you, they will not do it. No, no, you prefer it, it, no, that. No, 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 I'm coming, I'm coming. Uh, yes, the, uh, the answer to that, the lottery commission, uh, you have an answer to that. Okay. Um, Honorable Chairman, distinguished colleagues, we've made previous submissions on these issues and the Lottery Commission will stand on those previous submissions. Um, I will decline to add to or supplement anything that we've, uh, we've submitted previously. Um, our positions were made clear in our formal presentations. At this time, the NRC management is before the Senate uh, presenting a budget defense. Um, I came here in due respect for the, this commission and, and to this uh, panel and uh, the important work that they're they are doing. Um, but I, I don't have any formal presentation to make. I'm simply will respond to that by relying and standing on previous formal submissions that NRC has provided the committee. My name is Okechiko Aduna. I'm the legal advisor for the National Lottery Regulatory Commission. I, I want you. Is a live monitoring system that 
uh, we recently launched to track all uh, tra SMS transactions on telecom platform. Um, it's designed to ensure that we know the actual numbers that uh, are generated on that, that platform from which we can now ensure that the proper percentages uh, or the proper payment statutory uh, remittances are made. Uh, the system has been in place since the May 1st and uh, we have relied on that to issue out uh, invoices uh, to capture uh, the proper statutory remittances. Facility does not work in retrospect. It cannot capture the ones they've done all this while. Because I know in uh, financial management and things that have to do with that, it does not necessarily mean that from the standpoint where you meet a particular um, uh, um, um, electrical installation or whatever that you take from there to the future. But at times, it captures in retrospect as well things that must have happened to any greater. Because what we're talking about is about funds that have been catapulted out of the system over time. So please, I would like to know. Man, and I don't know no, if no, that no, system... No, don't go that way, sir. Uh, you, see, you see one thing. Sincerely speaking, talking. Let's try and enjoy. If not, all these sleepless nights... ...mentioned, we have lost massive amounts, massive revenues to SMS... Massive. Battery operate. Massive. 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 Happy. Millions or billions. No. In our estimations, we've lost billions of Naira, in our estimation. And we... we EFCC, ICPC, FIRS, and I have a serious question for CBN, because we need to trace where all this money is going to. Is it capital flight? We'll go into that as well. We want to trace this money. So please go on. We took a committed stance uh, mid-year to ensure that we put a system in place that would at least try and capture from that moment on till present day uh, as to the, the proper um, transactions that are generated on, on, on that platform and what the proper amounts are due to government. Um, in, the, in, in, in that respect, sir, we will make every effort to extrapolate those numbers backwards. And that we're, in the, we're in currently in that process. We're not going to leave anything to, to loss. We will recover everything that ne needs to be recovered according to the law. And we're working very closely with the trust fund to do that. Uh, but, but going forward, sir, we have receipts. What we've been talking about is that we've had receipts from May 1st. We've invoiced those 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 uh, items out, and we haven't seen the proper we haven't seen the proper response. Maybe because of the, the deliberations of this committee, but we expect to capture everything from May coming forward and from anything backwards from from the time those operators were in business. If they were doing SMS lottery on, on those platforms. We're going to recover the the, the, the pr proper amounts because now we have empirical evidence. That's why we, we, we know that this, the, the, the total losses are in the billions. We have, we have these, these, these the evidence now, they're empirical, and we can say if this is what they've made in the past five months or so, then this is the numbers that we estimate we've lost uh, in, in, in time past. And uh, that's, that, that's where we are right now. May God always guide us to do the right thing. Creative industry, your submission. standard practices says 70 to the owner, 30 to the network or distributors. We shouldn't, um, we've gotten to a stage where we need to diversify our economy. Maybe that's why we're becoming too serious about um, our economy and industry. Recently, um, CNN, two days ago, yeah, two days ago, Yes, but running, if you go home, you can actually plug into it, that um, 7.2 billion was realized from streaming 
just streaming, not download, not ring back tones of movies. 2,000, yes, 2,260 2, movies for only this year. Now that's about 2 point something trillion. When, yes, when you bring it down to Naira. And that is why we think it's urgent and necessary to bring up this presentation. Now, G Crate, P Man for Buhari Usubanjo's administration, a partnership for change. The team is to create jobs and grow revenue. Who we are, organized and operated by G Crate. NG, globalizing the Nigerian creative industry in conjunction with Pima, Kosan, AGN, DGN, Fadan, and Literary Industry. Now, our partners, we've been able to put this thing together for over four years. So we've been partnering with a whole lot of institutions to get it to where we have it now. Heritage Bank, Airtel, Central Bank, and NIBS. Nigeria Interbank Settlement System. Right now, the server that can house 33 billion data of information for creative industry is sitting in the office in the compound of NIBS. Auxiliary Partners, Ministry of Information, FIRS, EFCC. Who we serve? The median age of our members is 24 years old. Our industry employs yearly 12.5 million youths. I'm not saying people, million youths. We serve a consuming population between the ages of 15 to 54, and that represents 49.8% of the population, or 90 million youths. So this is the active and vulnerable population in Nigeria and a target group of interest and concern for the Buhari's administration. At this point, we should be worried of that industry. Our challenges, according to a recent study, the creative industry is assessed a worth of 15 trillion. Remember I said, this research was done four years ago. However, the industry loses yearly 10.3 trillion or 85% to national and global piracy. Additional. 3.7% is lost on uncollectible earnings, leaving 07 to the industry that produces this much. So our industry like a flaring gas. Nobody has been able to come together, put a structure. But each time we push forward, some other people will take us back. FIRS is unable to collect 3. 3 trillion or 20 percent of combined VAT and personal income tax for the government because there's no structure. Solution one, organize and host a press conference. We've been trying to do that. Announce a government commitment to fight piracy, protect creative assets, and grow the revenue in the sector. Institutional engagement, invite NBC, NOA, NTF, RRCN, FIRS, EFCC, to partner with the creative industry, P-Man, Koson, AGN, Fadan, and the whole of entertainment industry for a maximum sensitization, enforcement towards repositioning the creative economy. Now, I take a big bar here. We are not yet in creative economy. We are working towards becoming a creative economy. When the industry start contributing to a federal government pops, and that's what we've been working on. But it seems nobody was ready to pay attention to it. Issuing a standing order, issue a standing order to radio stations, TV stations, telecommunication stations, operators, block size, to cease and desist from using or playing non barcoded and encoded work, music or video on their platform. That is the only way we can now capture the amount of money I mentioned before. Solution two, 
mandate all government agencies to require evidence of ID card membership with the entertainment trade union as a condition for public agency contract. Now, our focus is not what the musicians are making, what the actors are making. Our focus is what is our economy gaining from this industry. So once you do this, you'll be able to tax them, you'll be able to monitor, you'll be able to, to regulate everybody in the industry. Promote compliance. Success depends on compliance. Mandate all artists to register themselves and their creative assets for barcode encoding through create, G Create Portal, NIBS, and CBN platform. Two steps, easy. Register as a member on the secured portal, then assess your unique barcoding and encoding to protect your creative work. You do it on your own. This is as easy as ABC. Like we said, we didn't run to anybody to get the server. We put money together and got it because we wanted to live in a state of utopia. It's been happening, but how do we now get here? We don't want other countries, other people to be eating from what we haven't been able to put together to get our economy where it's supposed to be. Opportunity, solution one and two, create jobs protect revenue of the artist and federal government. Nobody has looked at, in, at that aspect. Partnering with GCREAT is the right step towards fulfilling Buhari's administration commitment to diversify our economy. Everybody's saying diversify our economy. How do you diversify? You cannot diversify when you don't have a structure that can collate the resources on the, in the creative industry into the creative economy. Great. The creative economy supports exports, youth entrepreneurship, foreign direct investment in the sector to boost local economy. This partnership will strengthen government effort to discourage international productions, which is sucking away quality jobs. Um, I, I think what we'll do, you have your submission, right? right there. So I don't want you to, to feel to identify their limitation. Now it's a spillover. For CD production. For digital download, the industry produces 3.3 trillion a year. International royalties is 1.8 trillion. Ring back tones, 1.2 trillion. Telecom download and streaming, 1.8 trillion. So you remember I said it's four years back. But the new research from C CB and all that has gone up. Now the total gives us about 15 trillion. When government takes their VAT and government tax, that is from FIRS, that gives them about 3.8 trillion. But this is only for two sectors in the creative industry, movie and music. Now, if you bring literary industry, comedy industry, ICT industry, it will increase. Fashion, design, uh, fashion industry, it will increase. It will sp split over to like 20, 25 trillion. So basically what we're driving at, we can actually raise the revenue to run our economy through this sector. And we live in a state of, I said it before, in a state of utopia. Basically, but we have gotten a structure that can monitor, regulate, and show transparency, and also solve the, the problem of unemployment um, of our youth. Like I said, we serve over, over 50 million um, maybe uh, I make I will come in here or Lamsa, thank you for that. Thank you. Good afternoon, Honorable uh, the Chairman and the Honorables in the House. I'm very elated to be part of this um, committee and I'm happy to be a Nigerian for the first time. 
uh, because all my life uh, I've been so scared I would never get to this point. Um, I feel so bad. I'm someone that I've worked hard with all my efforts in life as a growing boy. I've run on the streets to make Nigerians happy, to make Africa and the world happy. But I want to tell you that my colleagues are dying every day. My colleagues, some just died yesterday. Baba Salah is dead. And um, I can tell you we'll keep dying because this has not been done in time. It's not been done. And uh, we, we, we ran to the wrong people. We're running to the Minister of Information or who can help us. We need these people to pay our bills. We need them to pay us. We're not begging them. We work for it. But they have a manner of gathering one, two, three people amongst the industry, like what BOI did, which I still want you to look at BOI, if you are here. BOI, Jonathan gave us three billion. I can tell you, we don't know where that money is. Some people were just invited from UK to come and make movies. While the real industry, we don't know what happened to that money. And I can tell you, people are getting rich on that money. And I can tell you, all the names you know in entertainment industry didn't taste that three billion. It was shared with just a few faces and their families outside Nigeria. So that's what we've been going through. And uh, we keep working and we don't get any returns. So we have, this is, this is the only way we can come out of this shenanigan. By barcoding ourselves and encoding ourselves, when you play my movie, then there's an alert somewhere. That way nobody can deny it. Um, you go take a producer and you pay a producer. According to UNESCO law, for entertainment, wherever a work of art is visited in time, not just the participants, the environment of shoot is supposed, supposed to be paid. So as they are showing our movies on African Magic and everywhere, every month they are supposed to be paying Lagos State, Asaba, Owere, Abuja, all our states. That's, that's before, that means they've already paid the artists and the real practitioners. But here, because of this godfatherism thing, we don't know who to complain to. We just wake up and some billionaire owns everything that we have worked for. And he just brings up a platform. And with that platform, he's now owning everything. And then he gets one or two actors to keep saying, hi, you're the best, you're doing very well. And then we are proud of you. Then the other actors are meant for six feet. <clears throat> Chairman, sir, God bless you. All the honorables in this house, I feel proud today that I'm a Nigerian. And I want you to please don't let this go. Because even the Bata player on the street, he's worth a lot of millions. Even the creative person that draws out there in Zamfara State, that keeps drawing the picture of somebody, that person deserves. Anytime you upload that picture internationally, all the views, he's supposed to get paid somewhere. A lot of billions of dollars or trillions of dollars are being stepped on by these big brothers of ours and it belongs to us it belongs to nigeria please we want this house to look at these people proactively in the face and ask them have you paid them who are these producers that you said you've paid that signed contracts for you producers are not supposed to take the money and walk away they have directors they have artists they have actors they have costumers they have location managers they have these dates to pay. So when you pay only producer and say, I've paid the producer and he's supposed to be the owner of the job, you are trying to short change the whole industry by using your own method. And I know this house has said it earlier on that no, it will not work because internationally, SI unit, international practice unit, is that 70% to the owner, then you that you are helping me will take 30%. Please let's revert that in Nigeria. I heard you saying Hollywood is worth 40, 400 billion. Now, if we are worth 7.2 billion in only 2016, then we are bigger than Hollywood. Already, the uh, CNN and the World World uh, Research said that we are bigger than Hollywood, but we can never see the dividends because of these are big brothers. They know how to hide those figures. They know how to cover it, and we don't. We are not the better for it. Please, we need you to also look at who and who is the head of our organizations, our video censorship board, our NBC, whoever. Please, we need. Our members, they say, he who wears the shoes knows where it hurts. Now, when our members are not heading NBC, they're not heading video censorship board, they're not heading any of those things. I can tell you a Mekamba that was former video censorship board came from DSTV. He was their content provider. So how can we make it? 
We need our own members to be able to apply laws and let these things work. We have old veterans. We have old Jacobs. We have old men. Uh, you know, plenty of people can stand and say, no, let's keep that. So that way, the young artists will have hope. Not just old artists, but both young artists, recognized or not recognized, you deserve your, 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 your pay, you deserve your artist remuneration. So we want to beg this house to please take this seriously. Because the kind of money we're supposed to make in Nigeria is beyond what we're saying here. Because Nigeria happens to be the entertainment hub of Africa. And I can tell you we are, we are, we are the ish. I just came in from Ghana yesterday. Every club plays Nigerian music. I was in Germany last two months. Every, even White Club it was Davido, it was Whiskey. We are all over the world. But why are we not seeing these monies? Why is it not replicated? Who is hiding these things? Please, let's, let's embrace barcoding and encoding. God bless you. My distinguished honorable, I'm just going to cite one example of how Nigeria, how much we've lost in revenue from the creative industry. There's a small island called Trinidad and Tobago. I'm sure we've all heard about them. There was a trip out there one time. And on the shelf in this country were Nigerian movies. Yeah, Nigerian movie. Our stars are celebrated out there like the Hollywood stars are being celebrated in Nigeria. And I now found out that there's a tax on our own product, a pirated CDs. All those CDs are pirated CDs. The country is taxing its own people for consuming Nigerian products. Not the online streaming, but the CDs. They make billions. Another country is making that much money off our own talent. So my brothers, it's about time we protect our home. It's about time we care for our own creative industry so that we're able to do good for the future of this industry. Thank you very much. As we proceed, there's a reason why we want you guys to be here. Let me tell you what's going to play out, probably from today. No company is bigger than the interest of this nation. Please, I want you to know that. We don't want any company to to fail. But where I'm getting at, you see the eighty salad issue is a signal on this particular industry where one plus one is ten. Nowhere in the world you find one plus one ten. But in Nigeria, somehow one plus one amounts to ten. Why did you think Enron, Enron in U.S. failed? Because we all remove our searchlight, beam our searchlight in some of the activities of this company. And I repeat, no company is bigger than the interests of this nation. That's why we provided the platform. That's why you have the permanent status and what have you. And I think FIR just came up with one debate, or what do you call it? Debate. Uh, yeah. If we get our taxes right, we'll have a stronger economy. Where am I heading to this? The card which is going to play out is if you do A and Z, A and B, these companies will fail. Uh, Nigerians will lose work. Why is it that in South Africa, in India, they apply this law, they beam their searchlight, and nobody are losing their jobs? For God's sake, let's ask the right question, please. Why do you know why, why, why? Henceforth, tune on CNN. All you hear is tax, 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 tax. 
Why is Apple not failing? Why are other, uh, other telcos companies not failing? All it takes is to do the right thing. So whether you run to the court or you run to one big shot out there, what you have to do is simple. Just read the act. Now, let me tell you why this is very, very, very straightforward. We, 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 we amend hearts. Act is the baby of this parliament, right? If you contradict the constitution, it's void. The constitution takes supreme. Now you have the constitution, you have an act of parliament, then you have one contract signed between, what do you call that, tissue paper. How can a tissue paper override an act of parliament and the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria? Can you try that in South Africa? Can you try that in India? Can you try that in US? Can you try that in UK? If you do that, many of these CEOs will be in jail. May God guide us to do the right thing. My office is going to be closed henceforth. I don't want to receive any visitors anymore. Just go and do the right thing. The only visitors I'll be receiving is ICPC, EFCC, CBN, FIRS. The document, almost 17 days, I've been waiting for the document from the telco. The well-drafted document, I'm here to receive one. The document that overrides an act of parliament, I'm yet to see it. So I want to see the judge that is going to rule that a contract agreement that contradicts an act of parliament <laughs> takes precedent. I want to see how it's going to play out. Let me call the spade the spade. The corruption in this country is so pervasive that a lot needs to be done. And if you don't do it, you will see more it is a lot happening. Because how can, how can, please, none of these companies quoted on Nigeria Stock Exchange. And that is why one CEO somewhere can do as he pleases. One CEO somewhere can do as he pleases. Is on a private jet, yes, but it's not on Nigeria Stock Exchange. They can do as, as they please. That's why Eti Salat came in and left. And let me tell you the implication of that for small business owners and people that really want to do journey business in this country. Our reputation is at stake. That's why I keep hitting on Eti Salat. Do you know what that says? about Nigeria in the Middle East? So seriously, these are serious questions. Do you know what that, what that interpret, how it play out about businessmen from the Middle East that want to do business in Nigeria? They say, be careful. Their laws are weak. They will take advantage of you. You won't even understand the figures. Because, and it's the truth, because we don't even understand the figures. We don't. And nobody is asking questions. And every day I hear Mr. President, the Vice President, the ministers talking about foreign direct investment. Do you think these people are stupid? They are watching our country. Because anything goes. If you want a strong economy, straighten our laws. And that's what we're doing here. So, EFCC and IPC, I, uh, ICPC, I mentioned Etisalat. The CEO, Etisalat is not here. Thank God for that. They just made my day. We invited Mr. Kim Bielo Saigi, he's not here. Thank God for that. They just made my day. Do you know why I said that? 
you need to use that. We need to use that organization as a case study to save this industry. Because the truth is, what they are putting out there, I'm afraid if you look into it, you'll be shocked. On behalf of the, of the industry, personally, I will write a letter. This position gives us the power to have access to Mr. President. We are going to present this case before Mr. President on behalf of the creative industry. We will do that. I want someone to move the motion to issue a warrant of, of arrest on the CEO of Otisalat Nigeria and Mr. Bilo, Akin Bilo Osage. It's been wonderful deliberation all this while. Uh, we have a member that just joined us, and please kindly introduce us. Cyber crime unit. I, I like that word, detective. Mr. Chairman and dear colleagues, and our guest, it's been wonderful deliberation all this while. And Mr. Chairman, um, the institution we found ourselves is a very procedural institution that has been highly guided excellently and expressly by our rules and the constitution. And I know quite well that um, we work hard to make sure we put the right perspective at all times as far as Nigeria is concerned. And when gatherings of this kind and invites have been extended to people and institutions, agencies, suspected that they respond for whatever reason that they were not able to come the first time or the second time, and the reasons are not quite genuine. I think it behoves on this house to reason otherwise and to invoke the necessary instruments that can put us on the right track. And having said that, Mr. Chairman, I think that there are one or two persons, organizations, leaders of particular organization, the um, Nine Mobile and the Etisalat. Several invites have been extended to them, and our procedures have not been accordingly be moving quite the way ought to because the necessary information we are supposed to gather from them have not been given to us. So having said that, Mr. Chairman, I'm of the opinion, and I want to move, that we issue a bench warrant on two persons, the MD and CEO of Nine Mobile, Mr. Boye Lusanya, to immediately come within the time frame we are going to extend the invitation to him, and Mr. Hakim Bello Osagie, the immediate past chairman of Emerging Market and this alert, that they should come. The next time you extend the invite to them, they must be here to answer this August house, so that we can move forward 
and do the needful accordingly. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Second, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And the man. Chairman, I think we have invited them several times and they have failed to attend. Uh, we have another option before going into issuing a bench warrant. We can issue a sermon for them to, uh, to compel them to appear. Only when they fail, then we issue a bench warrant. So let's soften it and give them more chance, one more chance by issuing a sermon for them to appear. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I saw Amen. Seconder. I, Honorable Tajudin Adepun Obasa, hereby second the amendment moved, as so moved by Honorable Shuai. I so second. This is my take. We'll start the proceeding. We'll put everything in process. From the summon to issuing of a bench warrant. That is what is going to happen. So I'll replace the word uh, warrant of arrest with summon why the proceeding for warrant of arrest is close to my chest or to the chest of this committee. And so also we've invited uh, uh, Glow. I, I can't even remember the, the last time Glow uh, attended any of our meetings. And Glow is supposed to be the own grown company. I think we'll make a fool of ourselves if we talk about MTN, Airtel, I don't know who owns it is a lot of nine mobile anyway. Well, I have looked it up. I didn't see that. So they've not honored any of our invitation. The MD. CEO. Anyway, uh, this is a tough one. but for the interest of this institution. And in summary of all I've said today, that no one is bigger than the institution called parliament. We oversight so many things. The parliament is the conscience of this country. And I think you all agree with me. Whether it is COO, clerk, please take note, or CEO, if there's nobody, nobody holding that position. So we are going to do a letter to the COO of Nine Mobile, to the C, did I say C, CEO of Nine Mobile, and to the chairman of Nine Mobile. So probably, I know, probably, uh, they've been using our letter as um, uh, probably they have a good lawyer saying we don't have a CEO. So we'll readdress that letter. CEO, COO, the chairman, which we've written several letters to. This time around, it's not going to be a letter. It's going to be a summer. While in this house, to save this institution for the interest of this institution as a conscience of this nation. 
we know is a Nigerian, we'll keep it just right on our right hand side an arrest warrant. If the glue company failed to honor any of invitation, not from Honorable Ahmed Abu, not from this other committee, but from the House of Representatives, because this is a mandate, this is a, is a, is a, a resolution of the House. I was looking at the history of the US Congress some days back, and I realized that why they are strong is because they made example of the so-called big and untouchable. Back, date back to 1700. You can look it up yourself. So for this institution to be stronger, I think we need to wait the big stick. The power given, it, given to us expressed and implied by the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Please, someone move the motion. Someone, the CEO, Chief Operating Officer of GLO and the Chairman of GLO to appear before the committee. I so move. Seconda. I, Honorable Tayyidina Adekunabasa, represent your Jofira Constituency, hereby second the motion as heavily moved by Honorable Richard. I so second. I will repeat again. This institution is the conscience of the nation. And I've said, I've looked at other Congresses. Why are they strong? It's because they set examples from the powerful and the untouchables. So for the interest of this nation, I hope when these people get our letters, they show up. And God help me, God, if they don't, trust me, I will make that call. I so rule. We're not going to listen to any of the telcos because there's nothing to listen to. We don't have the agreement. We don't know what it looks like, whether it is blue or pink or white or black. We don't know. So there's absolutely nothing to listen to. And even if you have it, if we have it, I think it's a tissue paper because it contradicts the act of parliament. So except if there's any laws, any laws, and the last time I checked, if there's any law called the ECOWAS law, it does not override the constitution of Nigeria. So someone should please move for adjournment. Thank you, my chairman. That will adjourn this sitting, Senator. This meeting is ever adjourned.